The history of the United States presidency is riddled by myth and mystery. A biography of the first American president, the no lie telling, cherry tree chopping, mythological mountain man George Washington reads like the historical equivalent of a comic book origin story. Even his teeth pass into legend. Were they made of wood? Ivory? Did he even have teeth? But the legends don't start or stop with Washington alone. Even the presidency before the presidency, the one held by John Hancock at the Continental Congress, is invoked today almost entirely because of myth. Did the man really write his name large enough so that the king could read it? Or maybe he was just overcompensating for something. Even the guy many Americans wrongly believe was a president, Mr. Hundred Dollar Bill Benjamin Franklin, is mostly a figure of myth. With his lightning rod in hand, he caught thunder from above. And with another rod, he attracted an entirely different type of thunder. Down under. If even half the stories are true, Franklin might have been a poor Richard, but he was a happy dick. Indeed, presidential myths are as American as apple pie and assault rifles. And it can be a tricky business untangling fact from fiction, conspiracy from conventional wisdom. For instance, I want to believe President Taft was so fat he got stuck in a bathtub, but is that even true? Likewise, I don't want to believe anything conspiratorial with the assassination of JFK, but the official story is a little bit fishy, no? It seems the great presidencies spawn great mysteries. But of all the great presidential unanswered questions, there is one that soars higher than the others, rising all the way above the fruited plain. And that question is, how gay was Abraham Lincoln? Was it Mary Todd or Harry Bod? Any honest investigation into the potential gayness of Abraham Lincoln must begin with the assumption of heterosexuality. He was, after all, a married man. But even a quick Google search is enough to stir this presidential presumption. Turns out there's an entire Wikipedia page dedicated to the potential gayness of Abraham Lincoln. Maybe the facial hair on his chin was Lincoln's second most important beard in his life. That's right, I'm looking at you, Mary Todd. Lincoln scholars have debated the gay Lincoln thesis for just under a century. In the 1920s, the gay rights movement sparked interest in the sexuality of historical figures. Around this time, biographer Carl Sandburg described Lincoln's relationship with his male friend Joshua Fry Speed as having a streak of lavender and spots soft as May violets. But he didn't back up the insinuation with anything concrete. In 1999, playwright Larry Kramer claimed to have discovered secret documents alleging evidence of Lincoln's homosexual relationships. Historians weren't convinced, and the letters were dismissed as almost certainly a hoax. Six years later, sex researcher C.A. Tripp's new book, The Intimate World of Abraham Lincoln, argued that Lincoln was a homosexual with equal controversy. Although Tripp did not forge any new documents, biographer Joshua Wolf Shank disputed that Tripp's entire claim was based on a tortured misreading of conventional 19th century sleeping arrangements. To be fair, throughout his life, Lincoln shared many beds with many men. Among these bedmates was Lincoln's streak of lavender companion, Joshua Fry Speed. In 1837, Lincoln met Fry while a member of Illinois' House of Representatives. They would go on to live together for four years, sharing the same bed every night of that tenure. To modern ears, that arrangement seems to highlight at least a little bit of gayness in Lincoln, but in the context of the time, it was nothing unusual. Historian Doris Kearns Goodwin argues that sharing a bed is hardly considered evidence for erotic involvement. In fact, men sharing beds was a common practice in an era where private quarters were a rare luxury. 
Imagine being poor and cold facing a snowy winter night in a small log cabin with only a single bed. Lincoln would have been a jerk if he slept soundly in his warm bed while his friend and roommate shivered next to him on the floor. Most of the evidence of Lincoln's homosexuality is conflicting at best. His stepmother, Sarah Bush Lincoln, claimed that he never took much interest in the girls. But then why did Lincoln fall into depression after the death of a woman named Anne Rutledge? Historians now point toward available evidence overwhelmingly indicating that Lincoln loved her. Add historical context and there aren't many reasons to believe that Lincoln was a homosexual. But before we close the case entirely, there is one piece of evidence. In his early 20s, Lincoln penned a body little poem about a gay relationship between two men. Here's an excerpt. For Reuben and Charles have married two girls, but Billy has married a boy. The girls had tried on every side, but none he could get to agree. All was in vain, he went home again, and since that he's married to Natty. Not exactly four score and seven years ago. Historical context doesn't quite explain it either. It's not like 19th century men recreationally pen poems about marriage between boys. Even for the irreverent Lincoln, the poem reads less as artistry or humor and more as psychological admission. But in isolation, it's hardly a smoking gun. The reality is that Lincoln, even under the gayest microscope, was probably at most just a little tiny bit gay. But we should despair not, for if we continue to follow the rainbow, it might still lead to a presidential pot of gay. This is James Buchanan. He consistently bottoms out in historical rankings of US presidents, which might explain why he looks a little hung out to dry in this picture. Now contrast that with this, a picture from his younger years. The look, so fierce. The man, so full of life, so happy. One might even say, so gay. Scholars euphemistically refer to Buchanan as the bachelor president, but the president's single status isn't quite so straightforward. It's more or less an open secret at this point that Buchanan likely had a homosexual relationship with the former vice president, William Rufus King. If true, this means that not only have we had a gay president and a gay vice president, we've had a gay presidential power couple. How scandalous. The details of this relationship are outlined in the very specifically titled book, Bosom Friends, The Intimate World of James Buchanan and William Rufus King. True story, the second chapter of the book is titled Hardening. In the book, we learn that Buchanan's relationship was more or less an open secret among his contemporaries. Former President Andrew Jackson called Buchanan and King Miss Nancy and Aunt Fancy, and Aaron V. Brown referred to King as Buchanan's better half. King was also called Buchanan's wife, and the actual wife of President John Tyler remembered them as the Siamese twins. In the surviving letters we have of the direct correspondence between Buchanan and King, the president laments on having no companion in the house and that he had gone a wooing to several gentlemen with no success. He wonders whether he should marry some old maid who should keep him happy without expecting any very ardent or romantic affection. Long is the list of presidents and their vices. Grant drank whiskey, JFK slept with half of the country, Jefferson was a hypocrite, Millard Fillmore hated books so he knew nothing, Jackson enjoyed genocide just a little too much, Obama liked mustard on his hot dog and wore a tan suit, but James Buchanan, well, James Buchanan loved his willy. This president's vice was a vice president. And you know what? Nobody cared. This might be weird to hear in our often touted as enlightened times. We like to see the moral arc of history as this linear path, but it's not so straightforward. We forget that being gay in the mid 19th century did not 
automatically exclude a man from national leadership. The idea that some people, including politicians and social leaders, are gay was not news or shocking to our forefathers. Americans generally considered it a private matter and irrelevant to holding or performing public office. In fact, the entire concept of sexual identity is a relatively recent phenomenon. Of course, there have always been gay people, but the category of homosexual as a type of person, as a way to frame your subjectivity, is mostly a modern conception. With this in mind, is it even fair to say that Buchanan was the first gay president? Is being gay simply the result of sexual preference, or does it also require an explicit declaration of identity? Maybe we'll never know for certain the sexuality of Lincoln or Buchanan. For now, we are left with speculation and one-off bios about the intimate world of presidents. Who knows which president will get the intimate world treatment next? But I for one hope it's Teddy Roosevelt.